Hi, this is Zach here with the weekend edition of the Bulletin Board Heroes here at Zach's Traders Cafe. It is Sunday, the 7th of April. And starting off with the FTSE 100, which has managed to find support where it has over the last week or so, just uh, below 78.90. Above that, we're still hoping and praying for a move up to the top of that rising December trend channel, 81.30, perhaps as soon as the end of this month. If we do break down, then the 78.100, area is the most likely destination, or maybe given the way that the FTSE is somewhere in between. Worst case at the moment is a return to the 50-day line in the floor of that channel, 77.30. Something to watch out for is the RSI uptrend line there from back in January, the RSI there around, uh, the support line there around 56, so we do want to see that broken any time soon. Next up is the DAX, which has been uh, the stronger party over the recent past, but uh, at the end of the week, uh, week four, the DAX uh, breaking that uh, Neckline support there around 18,200 and then the risk there of a move back down to the old uh, support there from the middle of March around 17,900. But not expecting much lower than that given that the uh, floor of that channel there from October is not far off that and obviously the 50 day line 17,500. But uh, ideally we find support at or near that 17,900 area. Moving on to the Dow, which uh, had uh, ups and downs this uh, week uh, with the uh, fear previously that we would uh, have to test the 50-day line. There was also support down towards the 38,500 level. That's also been tested. Hopefully the worst is over, but uh, probably want to see the market back above 39,000 to uh, then feel that we are uh, back in business in terms of upward progression and a move towards 40,000 plus by the end of next month but uh, has been missed with that uh, double top and then the gap down things looking a little bit more uh, ropey than they have for the Dow in quite some time obviously we had stayed above that 50-day moving average since the first week of November moving on to Bitcoin and uh, here the story that of uh, trying to consolidate the record-breaking run the current situation is that we are Having another go at the highs, uh, we're back above the old 2017 resistance, around 68,000, and we found support above the rising 50-day line, which tends to be a leading indicator on the upside. That suggests that we could still make it up to 80,000 plus by the end of this month. Obviously, we have the halving before the end of this month, so that is something to watch out for. If you're cautious, maybe you want to see that line of resistance broken there towards uh, 70,000 before assuming that a move back up within that rising January trend channel will continue. On the downside, below the 50-day line, 63,000. The worst we're expecting is 60,000 or maybe just below, just to uh, shake out a few weak hands. Moving on to gold, which has obviously had a stellar run uh, here, uh, making further progress. We're looking for 2380 by the end of this month. Obviously, it looks as though that might be delivered ahead of time and uh, a great breakout here. The uh, support notionally now at 2280 ahead of a 2380 target on this market and not expecting anything uh, much below uh, 2280 even if we do have a rug pull which we're probably overdue at the moment. Moving on to crude oil which I haven't looked at for a little while worth have, having a look here given the way that uh, We've had a breakout to the market actually heading into a uh, golden cross. Uh, probably actually, uh, you could say it's already happened there. So uh, up to the uh, $87 area. Uh, we've got a line of resistance from previously, which uh, may be worth uh, checking out. That was one from uh, the early part of uh, 2022. And you can see that uh, that falling trend channel that we've had in place since then just been broken around the $84 mark, above $84, looking for a retest, obviously of the $95 area, which was the resistance back in September. So uh, uh, literally a golden scenario there shaping up for crude oil at the moment and uh, obviously worth uh, checking out gold, uh, uh, rather oil and gas stocks to see whether they will uh, step up to the plate above 95, looking for 105 perhaps as soon as the end of next month, which would obviously be quite a change in the trend that we've had there for quite some time. Moving on to the stocks and starting off with the Vactor. Here are some glimmers of hope here. We had a falling su uh, support line there from uh, way back in uh, the beginning of last year. That line there heading it heading down to 44 pence uh, and the view is at the moment that while we're above 44, we've got a chance of this market not only retesting recent resistance towards the 60 pence area but hitting that December resistance line and the 50-day moving average area 
near 69 pence. That also ties in with the top of the uh, gap down that we had before the fundraise at the end of February. So upper 60s there for this market while we are on the right side of uh, 44 pence. We want to narrow that down probably 48 or 49 pence ideally would be the support ahead of uh, 59 and then 68. On to a less high profile situation at Aptima and uh, here you can see that um, I close in on this. Looks like we've had a bear trap here from below the February support. That was around 0.58 above that, looking for up to uh, 0.72. And the 50-day moving average, nice candle, obviously, at the end of the week, opened at the low, closed at the high, basically. So uh, very strong end of the week for Aptima. On to one of those stocks, which has uh, massive volumes uh, on both sides and rather spiky price action too. But uh, worth looking at uh, Barron Oil at the moment. We've got an uptrend line in the RSI window, and that's... Uh, uh, backing the idea that we found a base here as was the uh, strong end of the week initially you've got the 50-day line there at uh, 0 six and a half looking for up to uh, 0 08 there over the next week or two and that would obviously uh, fill the gap there with the old gap that we had from uh, the early part of February at uh, 0 uh, 7 moving on to uh, less fraught situation uh, hopefully a better one than has been for quite some time in the form of uh, cloud break and here Another uh, bear trap situation. So the old low there in January, around uh, 0.35 above 0.35. We're looking for the 200-day line now rising at 0.45, maybe as soon as the end of this month. That would obviously be quite a turnaround for that particular stock. Next is uh, Corsell. And uh, here you can see that uh, we've had a bit of a bear trap here as well, which is uh, good news. So just below the uh, 0.4 level, which was the um, November support, and actually below the uh, 0.36 level, which was October support above 0.36, looking for at least the 200-day line to be hit up there at 0.54. But ideally, we stay on the right side of 0.4 in the meantime. Big news from Eastar during the week. And uh, here, I suppose, uh, asset spec sales speculation, the driver, had the spike there, uh, unfold gap to the upside through the 50 and 200 day lines. We've held most of the gains of the update that we had on Wednesday, which is uh, normally a good sign. And that suggests that three pence here, the minimum on the upside over the next week or two. If you're a fan of the shares looking for greater glory, then there is a line of resistance from back in, uh, well, basically this time in 20, uh, this time last year, heading for as high as 4.3 pence. And we could see that by the end of next month if we stay on the right side of two pence in the meantime. One of the winners here at the uh, Bulletin Board Heroes in the recent past has been uh, Jelion or Jellion. And uh, here we've uh, held above the 200-day uh, moving average, 23 pence. That leaves us looking for a uh, quite an optimistic target, I suppose, up to 45 pence, hopefully by the end of next month or even sooner. The way things are going, it should actually be sooner than that. Could even be by the end of this month. A uh, requested stock is next in this bumper edition of the Bulletin Board Heroes. Here we've got uh, Gen Encode, which has uh, been uh, consolidating at our initial target here around eight pence. That's also the area of the 200 day moving average. Above that uh, 200 day line, looking for 12 pence, hopefully by well before the end of this month. You can see that uh, the last peak there in August around 13 and a half pence. So that could also be fair game for the bulls if we stay on the right side of the 200 day line. An interesting situation now at um, Helium One with the shares rising with no news, so no significant news in the recent past. Here we've got the shares closing at the week on a resistance line there from February. That was around 1.36 pence or 1.35. By 1.35, looking for the shares to revisit that rising 50 day moving average just shy of 1.7 pence hopefully over the next week or two. But a uh, very interesting pattern there, given, and it also suggests that the shares have taken up the slack of the uh, placings, et cetera, et cetera. Next up is uh, another requested stock, uh, not that um, sort of high profile, um, which is uh, Piper Hawk, or Pipe Hawk, in other words. So here you can see the shares went to new lows, but uh, the RSI, a higher RSI level there, around the uh, seven out of 100 area, that suggests that we could at least get a rally back towards December support around seven and a quarter pence. Best case, I suppose, would be a move back to nine pence by the end of this month. But we don't want to see any fresh lows after the uh, fall that we've had 
in the recent past. A stock which has been uh, on the back foot for quite some time is uh, uh, Pen Petro, and here uh, first signs of recovery with the uh, shares having a good day early in the week, uh, uh, opening at the low, closing at the high back on the second, and uh, which was Tuesday, and also delivering a decent uh, day back at the end of the week. That suggests that at least while we're above the support area of the last few days at point six six, we could head back up towards filling that gap. A one and a quarter pence, maybe by the end of next month. RUA is next, and this has been a great mover on an occasional basis. Here we had a couple of spike, well, a big spike in uh, November, and it looks as though we're going to have a, another one here now. The uh, near-term position is that uh, we've had a great rebound off the lows there towards uh, seven pence, and uh, looking for the shares to hit the top of that triangle and the 200-day moving average at 16 pence by the end of this month. If you're a fan of the shares and looking for more, then 27 pence by the end of the next month could be on the cards if everything goes right, i.e. we stay above the 12 pence area, which was the initial February resistance. Moving on to turn, which uh, the bears obviously like throwing stones at on a persistent basis. Uh, here you can see that things are looking, uh, I suppose, uh, surprisingly bullish in the sense that uh, we filled that uh, gap there from back in January, that was around the uh, well, around the Friday close. Also had a V-shaped bull flag breakout uh, through the uh, 2.68 pence level and the 50-day line now rising. That means we are looking for the 200-day moving average at 3.8 pence, perhaps as soon as the end of this month, uh, but only while we remain above that 50-day line around 2.1 pence. Upland is next, and uh, here the share is starting to push higher, I think, on no news as well, which is always good. Uh, we managed to puncture the 50-day moving average around 3.3 pence, and we've been looking for 5 pence over the course of the rest of this month. Obviously, we do have that spike high there from back in October, but uh, I don't know how reliable that could be in the near term. 5 pence seems to be more locked on as, as target for the shares. On to the last three. And uh, starting up with URA, where uh, we are waiting um, for a uh, show production by the end of this month. Top of the channel there, up to 2.8 pence. And we're looking for that, especially while we remain above that broken resistance line there from back in June, around 2.2 pence within that rising November trend channel. I covered uh, UJO during the week and uh, Union Jack uh, doing well at closing at the high on Friday, which is pretty impressive and probably more impressive than I was expecting, actually. But uh, looking for the top of that triangle there from November around uh, 21 and a half pence, maybe we could uh, stretch up to 22 and a half pence, which was the November resistance by the end of this month. Upside valid while we hold above the 50 day line now around 17.1 pence. Another stock rising from the ashes is Westminster Group. It's our last stock of the day, and uh, good to see the shares uh, managed to uh, hit and break our initial target there around 2.1 pence. Second target there for the end of this month, or even sooner, two and three quarter pence, which is the upper parallel of that uh, broadening triangle from March last year. That's it for me today. More updates during the week.